Several months ago, back in the summer of 2021, I was talking about writing blog posts with a friend of mine and I just, I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to deal with things like WordPress or media. While the latter would be ideal, I just decided to do the overly ambitious novice developer thing and make my own. So I continued doing the novice generic developer thing and five months later, I still didn't finish the side project, but this time, I swear, this time I'll do it. And then I didn't. Wait, well, not entirely. I did write the front end, which is the stuff you see, but there was no functionality. Feed, a blog feed. The blog feed just generates four blog posts and the blog posts has its own HTML here. And then everything is done in one big CSS file. So this is the, um, XD prototype, right? Hold up. We have the actual site, which as of right now, isn't the same font or anything, but header, um, some tweets on the side. I wanted to make this fixed, but that's proving to have problems. And this is just generating the same blog post over and over again. Slower progress than I'd like, but uh, I'll be getting this done this week. Still having not finished this with a random sprint board sitting on Todoist for a while, I eventually lost all incentive to work on it until I started my full-time job, which ironically was the thing that triggered finishing the side project. Hello internet, welcome back to... Hello internet, welcome back to a dev So here's where the devlog starts. During the orientation weeks of my full-time job, they wanted us to use the two weeks to make some sort of project using Spring, a framework for Java. And no, not the coffee. I toyed with the idea of making the project my blog page and that somehow became a reality. So lo and behold, the project that I couldn't complete for over seven months was completed in just one week. Well, the requirements were done in a week, but I continued to work on it in my spare time. And after two weeks, I more or less considered it minimally complete all right, I'll wrap up my conclusion. I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, that's weird, the login out's not working. Um, I will push it off, but the blog page is up and live. That is kind of cool. <sighs> I'll do, you know, all of this is formatting, so. Yeah. So the back end. My approach to building the back end was to perform two functions. The first is that when someone loads up the blog page, they should see a whole list of all of my blog posts. And second is that when I write a blog page, it should save it to the database and no one else should be able to write a blog post. With the front end being written in React, it was straightforward for me to send the information of when someone logs in or when I write a post from the page to the server. So I just had to, you know, build the server. If only that wasn't the thing I was procrastinating on doing for seven months. Nonetheless, I started with a SQL database due to a pseudo requirement from the uh, bootcamp or whatever. That was a mess. Hmm. Okay, I need to take a, take a minute. <clears throat> I thought HostGator's free SQL hosting for my site would be okay, but apparently they're for an old version on SQL. So anyway, I needed to send information from the front end to the back end. But by default, the back end doesn't really trust anyone. So you need to get this thing called Cores, Cross Origin Resource Sharing, enabled. Fortunately, it's super easy with Spring, but Cores has the absolutely amazing quality of being a thorn in just about everybody's side. Let's just say that when I thought I had solved an issue, when the error message went away, Coors was like, ha, psych. The meaning though. Am I getting anything from the back end? Nope, not a thing. Seeing as I didn't want anyone coming along with some willy-nilly random post, I went ahead and started doing some authentication. I wasn't sure how to use JSON web tokens with Spring, but I figured it out. And a bunch of code copying and fiddling around later, oh, it, it still didn't work. Eventually I got it and some routes were good. All I had to do was delete that one line. I had a good understanding of how things worked, but at the end of the day, I just had to delete one line. Holy cray. Oh my God. I, I feel kind of smart, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh my God. I love coding sometimes. It's just, ah, oh, it's my favorite. Okay, so now I'm the only one who has access to my blog page with a, a cheeky little login bubble that really doesn't look good. And it's so out of place. But anyway, it was time to save the data. It was so fun. 
First, I got to spend a lot of time wondering why the MySQL connection wasn't working from Spring and go down several wild goose chases. Then I got the opportunity to learn on AWS on a whim and spend some time deploying a free MySQL database from there. And oh, well, that actually worked and that actually worked really well. In fact, that's exactly what I'm using. That was pretty hype. Posts actually loaded from the actual database. The thing is, now that I can load posts from the database, I need to send my posts to the database. I don't have a way to write posts yet. I should do that. All I had to do now was make sure that if someone writes text in a post body, they can click a button and have that text saved to the database. Well, that's so easy. You just take the text from the form body and you send it along in a post request. And then you discover that ampersands, colons, everything in the URL, and just about every other key on your keyboard that isn't a letter causes some sort of issue. Still no dice. Huh. Single quote still made it through. Frustrating, but it happens. <laughs> yes. I'm putting in those breaks now and seeing how I can do that. Honestly, I know why they cause issues and it makes sense, but I just think it makes it feel worse. If it works on local, then it will clearly work in production. If you ever hear those words in development, you should immediately have sirens going off and thousands of red flags waving. At the end of the day, I went with using Heroku for some free cloud deployment, but had an absolute banger of a time figuring out environment variables and whatnot. I guess Spring didn't really support a .m file, at least with the seemingly hundreds of things I tried and dozens of stack overflow threads I was looking at, so Heroku environment variables ended up working, after I was informed they actually existed from a friend of mine because I didn't read the documentation very thoroughly. Then I had to set local environment variables, and I swear I've never had a harder time Googling how to do something like that. Very strange. Now, the thing about deploying a backend to some other computer somewhere is that you have to make sure you change the IP from localhost to whatever the front end IP is. And I definitely didn't hard code localhost everywhere in my code. Yes, I did. You should also make sure to change any relative routes or accepted origins on your backend, because cores will always cause problems and haunt me in not only my nightmares, but probably haunt me in my dream. Obviously, I didn't forget to change those routes for cores either. Yes, I did. Then I got to post my whole blog page up and smile when I realized I hadn't implemented Markdown support. Post, AWS first post is my tags. Finally got it on and I hit submit. Post submitted, smiley face, I was an alert. So, oh, I must have canceled the, uh, <laughs> feels good, man, feels good. If you check my blog page as of this video, you'll see that I still haven't implemented Markdown support. The site's current state is an MVP or minimum viable product. It works and does what I want it to do on a most basic level and checks all the boxes that I wanted to accomplish to say that this project was done. I am, however, feeling great about checking it off my list of side projects I'll one day get back to, and I'm sure when I wanna write a post, I'll crank out a few tasks on that to-doist board. So yeah, <laughs> this is my first devlog in whatever style this is. Any and all feedback and comments are greatly appreciated. Let me know what side projects you've been working on. Recording everything I'm doing and editing it seems like a very daunting task, but hopefully it makes for a fun video. Make sure to share and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm someone who's familiar with React, so for my next side project, I'll be writing the front end using AngularJS. And if there is a back end, I decided to use the widely lauded programming language PHP. Maybe. Wish me luck and keep an eye out for development podcasts about that project, Twitless.